Hello. Today, the Q&A is on my DS lifestyle. Thanks to the suggestions by you and all the questions that you've asked as well. So if you have any questions, be sure to do it down below with the little question button thing at the bottom. Thank you everybody for joining. Here we go. So let's see. Hmm. <laughs> My DS lifestyle. Is it okay that a mistress just uses slaves for doing chores? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but of course, if you don't feel fulfilled, that is a conversation that you need to have. But I definitely have people who serve me who only do chores and receive plenty just from that. <laughs> so there can be different subs in my life that are useful for different particular things and some who have more comprehensive roles. So to make that a little bit more about my lifestyle. <laughs> oh, this is a nice one. So have you ever had someone who depends on you 24 hours, seven days a week? Have you ever been overwhelmed by that? Hmm. Yes. Everybody's very different though. So the way that they look towards you uh, is always going to be different. So even if I have a live-in person and uh, one after the other, they can look completely different uh, if it's 24-7. And so that would really depend. Have I ever felt overwhelmed by that somebody's always looking towards me? Mm, I would say that I get tired like physically tired but I don't ever feel necessarily overwhelmed because that's my personality <laughs> and I welcome it all right so mm. <laughs> I like this one because of my potential answer best dom everyday wear or accessory something subtle that says I'm the boss well <laughs> we could dangle a, <laughs> a little chain uh, off the end of our hands or we could wear whatever the hell we want <laughs> and i would say that over time i have shed um as much as i love and adore latex and love a good corset i definitely don't need that to get myself in a headspace i would say that most of the time I'm wearing very average <laughs> clothing that are fit for being around the house and I think it's definitely more about how you carry yourself and how you necessitate um, or how you draw out <laughs> the things from the people around you more than what you're wearing, when, especially within a lifestyle context. However, not every day, there's not much that beats a full latex or leather outfit. <laughs> There's something innately captivating and terrifying about those options. Um, all right, so I kind of touched on this a tiny bit, but let's go into it a little bit more. What's your idea about home slaves 24 hours a day? It depends on the person. I've had it work very well before because of the compatibility of how people serve me, listen to me, um, know how to manage themselves to a certain extent. Um, however, it's really an issue of compatibility <laughs> because some of you can be extremely annoying <laughs> and not learn how to do things that I've taught you how to do at least once or things that are common sense. <laughs> so those of you who are watching who are on <laughs> quotas of how often you can see me, that is why. And <laughs> why people get to see me more often is because they learn. <laughs> So that's my thought about 24 7. Uh, I'm entirely open to it, definitely have the personality for it, me, um, but whether the other party can comply <laughs> and survive it is another thing. So, mm. <laughs> how do you make your slaves scared of you, which makes them extra obedient? Um, I am myself. <laughs> I don't think, well, of course, there can probably be tactics, but I don't think I utilize any of them in particular. I would say that um, people get very invested in me and they want to please me, hence <laughs> the username. Um, 
And so I think failure scares them. And th my disappointment is obsessing. <laughs> and so therefore, I don't need to do anything more than that because I found somebody who's actually invested in me and I am invested in what they are doing for me and I react accordingly. That's very natural. And it's mostly about correction and expression of disappointment. And yeah, I mean, I do have discipline structures. However, I think the thing that shakes everybody the most, including myself, is when I have to express extreme disappointment. And I think in a lifestyle context, that might be really the thing that's most powerful when real emotions <laughs> are shared and lines are drawn. <laughs> so that might not sound so glamorous, but that is how it is. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, do ask down the bottom. Mm, all right. Yeah. Okay. How do you want the people who serve me to be dressed? Um, it really depends on the context. Around the house, it really depends on my mood. <laughs> and that could be, um, I, do, I do dictate what people wear if I am not okay with their personal style. And I do take people shopping very early on if I am not okay with their personal style. And so they have home clothes and they have outside clothes and I make sure that I um, verify what people are wearing when they're coming out with me. Uh, so yes, so it depends. It depends on the scenario. And it also depends on how much I can push somebody. Uh, of course, I have my moments where I like people to be in matching latex with me, but that is not, of course, always necessarily the case in a lifestyle arrangement because we go out to dinner in very vanilla restaurants sometimes too. <laughs> but of course, you could be wearing something underneath everything, but that maybe is for another question if somebody wants to ask it. Yes. All right. So questions. Mm. Oh, this is very sweet. Thank you for asking. Look for cookies. How do I self-care in between play or sessions? And let me make this applicable to the DS lifestyle. How does one self-care in a 24-7 arrangement? <laughs> uh, at least in how I practice. So maybe I'll go into that in a bit more detail. I have people who are always um, in that dynamic with me and actually that is always the case. <laughs> I don't vary dynamics usually. Um, and, but they do get to spend varying amounts of time with me. Uh, some much more than others and sometimes chunks of time. So how do I self-care when it's like large periods of time with people? Um, I think I have two ways. Sometimes I ch put people on quota so I get time alone and then I also have time to process everything. And I also train people to shut the hell up, <laughs> to rub my feet in a particular way, to not need my attention all the time, to have a, a series of things that they need to do around a house in a space for me and that eases me, that really calms me down when those things are being done. And so it's, it's almost like interactive <laughs> in a way, but I've trained them into routines that help support my self-care. So yeah, I think those are maybe my two main ways of doing things. And you know, a really good sauna, spa day also really helps. <laughs> and having a very comfortable environment. I've been decorating my new house lately, which has really made me very happy. You'll see the cage and a few other things. And so that's also very useful, having a very comfortable environment with everything that I want where I want it. <laughs> but it's going to be different for everybody, yeah? So if you have any questions, please use the question box down the bottom. Oh, so many questions. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Daniela Del Castello one asks, how does your mood or whether you are having a good day or a bad day impact your DS lifestyle? <laughs> if I'm having a tough day, <laughs> oh, I hope somebody's around that enjoys discipline. 
because <laughs> it really helps. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be very, very short tempered amongst the people and my partners who are very close to me. And they are close to me in so much so that they also understand the things that are happening in my life and therefore know that it's not necessarily uh, how pathetic they are. <laughs> Although that does have something to do with it, but um, that it might be accentuated because of the other things that are happening in my life. And so they can either you know, cater to me and make sure everything is as correct as can be, <laughs> or they might be on the receiving end of a beautiful discipline session that will alleviate some stress. Um, and if I'm having a good day, I'm probably laughing a lot and probably still torturing them, to be frank, because I do that when I'm in a good mood too, but maybe with a different tone. <laughs> so maybe it doesn't look too different, but um, with a slightly different expression on my face. <laughs> so that's how I experience life. But again, it's not the same for everybody. Um, all right, let's start from the bottom. Oh. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Vicious Vendetta. Wonderful username. Uh, question is lifestyle versus pro, compartmentalized or all inclusive? Pros and cons. Woo! Big question. All right. Lifestyle versus pro. Do I compartmentalize or am I all inclusive? Because this is my genuine personality. <laughs> I do not compartmentalize how I act. Do I compartmentalize when I'm on a, a paid session versus not? I'm very similar. <laughs> I am very, very, very similar. I would say that maybe when I have short periods of time with people and um, I don't get to see them that often and it's a pro session, then um, or it doesn't matter. When I have short periods of time with people, I probably, you know, maybe choreograph things a little bit more. So I'll take where they've come from into account, where I want to bring us and what I want them to walk away with a little bit more into um, play. Um, but I would say that when it comes to lifestyle everyday, people who I get to see every day, every other day, um, there isn't as much of a deliberate choreography. There's always something in the back of my mind where I have a concept of who they are and what I would like them to morph into, to accentuate or whatever, but I'm not so deliberate about it because I'm just kind of taking one day at a time. Um, but yeah, so when I have short periods of time, I would say that is the difference. Um, pros and cons of both, um, because of the way that I've structured everything now, actually I get to experience a similarity across the board with what I bring to the table um, and the relationships that I sort of have. So it's mostly rather, really the only change that happens is how much time I'm spending with people. Other than that, my lifestyle pro-life looks very similar actually. Um, but. Yeah, so if I maybe wind back the clock a little bit before it was just like this, what were the pros of having one versus the other as one space and the other? I think I put a lot more pressure on myself when it came to a, a pro capacity. I felt like I had to deliver something and I think that was very stressful for me. So I think I like the way that I've kind of moved in the direction of, and I kind of see everything like, all right, this is who I am, this is my personality, I'm gonna bring that to the table, and I'll be more deliberate when I have less time with somebody so that we can like get the most out of it, um, but I'm gonna be a little bit more free and easy when it comes to someone that I get to see a lot because, you know, I don't wanna burn either of us out. <laughs> but like a short, intense period, that kind of works. So I would say that's maybe how it looks for me. But I know people who very heavily compartmentalize. They use different titles, they use different outfits, they use different spaces, they have different days, they have very specific rules around a lot of things. So I think it really depends on what you really need. So thank you for that lovely question. Vicious Vendetta. Okay, do I have a domestic slave? Yes, I have a few and they have different tasks because they are good at different things. Um, okay, ooh, 
Ooh, how do you educate a slave? <laughs> so many ways. So many wonderful ways. I would say there's too many things to really go through. I have a lot of protocol of how I like things done. I would say the thing that maybe is worth really mentioning is that I'm very, very consistent. I would say when I want something done, I explain clearly how it needs to be done and I'm always consistent with what I want. And I would say that being like that makes it an easier process for everybody because you know we know what to expect. And often when things don't happen how I want it, I usually find myself to blame, at least at the beginning, because it's about explanation and understanding people's capacity and matching that up. So it, it's very different. And yeah, I have also a very particular discipline structure. <laughs> um, and it really depends, again, on the different personalities because they respond to different things. But at the moment, I've been practicing a very simple, however many numbers of times you talk back to me or mess up how many numbers of times you get the implement of my choice today. You know, so things like this, keeping it consistent, discipline and structure. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, let's see. Hmm. Do I have a sub partner in real life? Yes, I have a few. Uh, Oh, this is the cute, this is the cute one. Does the dynamic in your household change when vanilla friends or family visit? Good question. So my vanilla friends and family know about my lifestyle and know about my job. And so it's easier for me also, I mean, maybe I'll actually have a quick look. I uh, have, can you see that? I have very large pictures of me in latex around the house also. And so um, it's inescapable. <laughs> uh, so does it change? I, use, I, I, I might not use the same titles and I might not be as short as when I'm alone with my subs. I might be a little bit softer and I might also save discipline for not immediately then, but at, after, so I'll be like, Okay, you need to remember the number three because that's how many times that you move the glass into the wrong place. <laughs> and you're going to pay for that later. <laughs> I'll say it very quietly. Um, yes, whereas if we were alone, that we might, uh, we might address the number three then and there. <laughs> so I would say that's, uh, those are probably the differences that I have. When people didn't know or when people have no idea, it's very hard to change my personality. I'm generally... I have a very clear idea of how I want things done and I am very assertive in how I communicate. And so that doesn't really change, but I am aware of titles and what might be embarrassing and things like this. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you could be aware of depending on the group that's around you, but that's how I shift it. These are great questions, by the way. Thank you. I, I really, I'm really liking them. Okay. Hmm, okay. Oh, this is a cute one. What everyday slave duties are most important to you? Hmm, this is different for everybody. But I would say the most important thing is that people follow through on what they commit to. Um, and usually when I ask if people are going to do something, can they do it? Are they okay to do it? Do they feel like they can follow through on it? And okay, if everybody agrees, I expect you to do it. <laughs> and I expect you to do it repeatedly. And, and then if, if you have an issue, you have to bring it up. Um, but I would say that there are things that are very particular to my everyday way of living that I enjoy having satisfied. However, the most important thing is that things actually happen when they are said to be happening. Uh, because I am severely disappointed otherwise, and you will probably be dismissed pretty quickly if you repeatedly do that. Um, but like very, very everyday stuff, uh, there's like a routine that I like having done in my house with how I like water bottles filled and things washed and things folded and put away. So that's it's too long of a list to kind of go through. But I would say those are very, very everyday things that I don't mention anymore. 
Um, and then I have like a, a running list of to do's for all a bunch of different slaves also that is <laughs> full of random stuff. Like I need somebody to look after my new tree and things like this. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just life, right? It's just having somebody support you very deeply and thoroughly in life. And I really enjoy that and that works for me. So. Um, mm. Okay, so with the DS lifestyle, how do I date? <laughs> how do I date? How does one describe how they date? Maybe how I find people? Uh, so I am on the apps. <laughs> and do I ever get introduced via friends? Yeah, sometimes. Um, and I'm very, very upfront with my lifestyle and my preferences and my job. And yeah, I kind of look for people who are not so shallow, <laughs> who kind of have their shit together, <laughs> um, and who are open minded. And I would say that I can be flexible to a certain extent. Um, in how I interact with people for sure and the things that I ask of them depending on who they are However, my assertiveness definitely doesn't change and my ability to understand what I want and how I want it done Also doesn't necessarily shift. So I date like all of you <laughs> My mother has even wanted to introduce me to people before <laughs> But mm. <laughs> I, I, I found it better to find them on my own. <laughs> and it's working out so um, pretty well so far. Yeah. <laughs> Do I find people through any other means? No, not really. I would say that also I take it pretty slow. Um, I'm very upfront with who I am. I take it pretty slow in terms of trying to figure out who they are and how comfortable they are with my life and how I am. Because it can be very confronting. Um, and we take it from there. <laughs> yeah so maybe i'll see you on the apps i'm only on the ones in um bali and singapore right now so don't get tricked um <laughs> how many mistakes is a slave allowed to do before getting kicked out of my life forever <laughs> how big are the mistakes how big are the mistakes um oh god like everyday mistakes unfortunately they can happen repeatedly <laughs> it was really annoying but if it's like bigger mistakes around things that i find very important like my privacy or like how they care for my loved ones um then hmm. <laughs> they could maybe make half a mistake <laughs> Yeah, and then they're gone. Uh, I take some things much more seriously than others, and yeah, it's the job of them paying attention to who I am to understand what those things are and take them seriously too. So I think it's really hard to say exactly. Everyday little things, you know, about my house, I can kind of deal with. Um, about travel, um, if I'm stressed, I'll deal with it less. Uh, but about things that are really important to me, yeah, you don't have much of a chance. <laughs> if you don't have your shit to get there. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Mm. All right. Ooh, almost at half an hour. How many more should I do? Mm. Oh, this is a cute one. How would you describe your lifestyle in one word? That's <laughs> too many words. Too many words. The one that comes up most is not so exciting, but... But fulfilling. <laughs> I wanted to say all-encompassing, but that's too, isn't it? All right. I got to leave it at that, right? That was the question. So I could go into it more, but you know. Ooh, how do I take a break from the lifestyle? I don't like to take a break from the lifestyle. It's my life. <laughs> I It gives me life, yeah. So, I mean, I don't socialize so much within the lifestyle, to be frank. 
I used to do it about once a month with my closest friends in New York and London, but I can't do that right now. Um, so how do I take a break from it? I'm, I mean, I, it's literally my life. <laughs> so I, I, can't, I can't, I don't, I don't want to. I would feel dead <laughs> if I didn't have it in my life. So yeah, so I, I, maybe that's a question for somebody who maybe doesn't manage their boundaries as, as well as maybe I do. Maybe I understand like, oh, I can't see, uh, I can't go to too many play parties because I'll be too burnt out. Or I don't want to see... Um, too many subs right now, so I'll only see this one this week or something like this. So yeah, so I do these things to manage my sanity. So maybe that's why I don't feel like I need to take a break. Uh, yeah. Mm. Ooh, so many nice questions. <laughs> Some completely n not to do with the particular topic of today, which is DS lifestyle, everybody. But such is the nature of the wide Instagram that is you. All right. My goodness. Lots of you are asking about chores. Do you want more chores to do for me? Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this one. As a sissy, must one live this 24 hours a day? So let's do this not about you, Sissy Amanda. Let's do this about me. <laughs> so as a sissy, must you live this 24 hours a day if you were in my life and you were a sissy? Um, in my eyes, you would always be a sissy. <laughs> Whether we're outside and you're not wearing your clothes or not, pretty little underwear might be on underneath, but you know. So I would say that how I see the people in my life definitely doesn't shift when we're out and about, when we're family, when we're not. You are always what you are in relation to me. Um, but do you feel in that mindset all the time? Like that's gonna be your thing, isn't it? It's whether you're owning it to that capacity or not. I, I kind of own my identity and my relationships pretty fully because that's just how I am. Um, but it's really up to you. If somebody was struggling with their identity and they were in my life, then there would be conversations. But I find it really hard to be with people who are not um, accepting that of, their, of what they want um, or they don't know how that they need to compartmentalize it for themselves. So, I mean, it's totally fine. You don't have to be, you know, wearing your outfit all day, all night. You don't have to be crawling around on the floor all day, all night outside, but maybe at the house. <laughs> um, but uh, I need you to be comfortable with how and when and that kind of thing. Otherwise, it's not going to work for me because then it becomes such a big like problem for me. And I can definitely be there for you to help you kind of figure it out, but it's really, it's not my job to do that it's yours because <laughs> you're inside your own mind and I do hold the people who serve me still accountable for their own minds you know I can make a lot of suggestions but at the end of the day you are also responsible here and yeah so that's maybe a, maybe that's its own topic on its own all right let's do let's do a couple more <laughs> This is, this, is, this is not very very clearly worded, but have you ever... I think this is something about um, watching people go hungry and not letting them eat. <laughs> I haven't starved anybody for days before, but maybe for hours. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, myself was complaining that they, that they needed to drink water, and they, there's this protocol where... Um, they need to ask before they want to drink water in my house and um, they didn't <laughs> and they said that they were very very thirsty because they didn't drink the day before but they they didn't remember to ask <laughs> and so I don't care <laughs> you're gonna go without it and I let them have it eventually when I saw like how dehydrated and, and <laughs> they were looking but um but yeah so 
have I let anybody go hungry? Uh, it depends what it's around. I think just for the sake of going hungry, no, I haven't done that yet. And I wouldn't do it for too long because that can get dangerous for everybody. I like to have living subs that are capable of doing things. So yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, I think I got through most of the questions and they've kind of overlapped a little bit. I'll go right to the bottom for some new ones. Ah, these are good, these are good. Oh, hello, Annabelle. Thank you for your question. I'm so happy to see you here. Do you look for a particular personality trait in a sub other than the obvious? What is the obvious, Annabelle? <laughs> what is the particular personality traits that I look in subs, look for in subs. Um, I would say that I like them to be confident, which is maybe something that not everybody would imagine. But I like them to be very, very confident in who they are and where they are in life and who they are in relation to me. <laughs> because if I don't have a really strong partner, they will crumble very quickly <laughs> because I can be pretty tough. <laughs> so I would say that's probably something that I've discovered over the years. I can't have people who are not pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. um, other than that, uh, I would say I need people to be pretty, pretty quick to a certain extent. So, um, because I, my patience is not super deep. <laughs> uh, I am very, very clear and I invest time in how I train people and how I communicate, but that's the initial period and after that you really need to get your shit together <laughs> because I don't have time after that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, tell me what the obvious is, Annabelle. I think those are probably the things that I need at the top of my list. Yeah. And then consistency with those things as well. I like people to be able to do that on a consistent basis. So maybe those are not the sexiest of traits um, in terms of, uh, you know, how people averagely perceive traits to come across. But I think those are very important to a sustainable dynamic for me. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, this is not in the question box, but Heather is asking, does gender play a role in my subs? So I would consider myself pansexual, and therefore I don't really take things into account when it comes to gender, unless it's something that the person in front of me wants to bring into things and or have conversations about it then it kind of comes very much into play. And obviously there are things that you can play around with it if people are up for having that kind of level of an open dialogue and exchange. But in terms of how I choose people, I would say traits supersede gender at this stage. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Okay. So Sophia's asking, what made you to decide to take this up professionally? So maybe that's coming from a place where this is my lifestyle and therefore why are you doing it professionally? Actually, for me, um, this job was suggested to me many, many, many years ago by somebody who I thought I was in a vanilla relationship with, and I was in a vanilla relationship with them. <laughs> but... Um, the pattern of how I am is that I've always been kind of like this, and so it, which is very assertive, and apparently that's not <laughs> your average experience when it comes to being in a relationship with a woman, apparently, an Asian woman, maybe. Um, and so they suggested this concept of a dominatrix, and I didn't know what that was, and I didn't think about it until I felt like you know, Googling it one day <laughs> when I wanted a little bit of a career change. And so I found it first professionally, actually. And then I would say pretty immediately, I, of course I had a lot of fun <laughs> in a professional context. It was a lot of fun. 
Mm, and then I started to integrate the things I learned in the dungeon into my personal life a little bit, you know, just a little bit of like around my dating and, you know, maybe I'd like slap somebody a little bit here and there and, and I'd be a little bit more comfortable really ordering people around as opposed to trying to slide it under there like before, like I thought I had to do. Um, and so I came to it professionally and then it slowly seeped into my personal life until, yeah, <laughs> until it's taken over as the realization that it suits me beautifully. <laughs> and, and I don't maybe, this is also another interesting question, I guess. It's like, there are a lot of things that I've learned from the, this world, from this BDSM world, kink world, um, and that I brought into my life on like a play level, you know? So whether it's the discipline or whether it's like the types of protocol and how far you can push it and how playful you can be, whether it's like pet play or things that maybe, you know, don't look part of the average vanilla exchange. However, my personality hasn't changed. <laughs> it's just have, it just has a little bit more room to like kind of play, you know? And so, <laughs> I would like to pose a question, like, how much of this is a structured lifestyle and dynamic and how much of this is just allowing myself to be? So maybe there's a question <laughs> somebody wants to ask me <laughs> or whether I can ask him, answer it myself uh, next time also. So yes, please use the question box down the bottom. And so let me just scroll all the way to the top and see if there's anything else. Um, what's my daily routine? So you've already asked me that the last time around. Um, why don't I show my feet on my posts so you can find them in other places? <laughs> Asking about excrement. I'm sure Instagram would love to hear about excrement stories. Um, favorite stories. When did I know what, when do I, what do I wear? I don't know. I think I think I might have answered the most relevant questions. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much, everybody, for your questions today about the DS lifestyle. I hope that I've answered a bunch of them well enough. Let's do this one. Do you think cuckold marriage works? Ooh. <laughs> Do I think cuckold marriage works? I think if all parties are invested in the dynamic and they both actually want the dynamic and they can have an honest conversation that builds up to things and breaks down things, I think there's more of a potential of that marriage surviving. <laughs> but that is actually a bit of a format for any marriage. <laughs> so yes, I think if the communication skills and the investment is there, sure, why not? I'll let you know if I try a cuckolding marriage and how it goes if it comes around. How about that? I have some partnerships that are like that. So far, so good. Not easy because people attach a lot to penetrative sex um, in terms of their ego, but um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, some people are strong enough to work around it, to talk about it, etc. So, anything else to do with a DS lifestyle that anybody would like to ask, please do so. Oh, okay. The girl and man who you post a lot, are they your real life slaves? So, the girl you mentioned is probably Aria Lux. She's my sweetheart. <laughs> She's my sweetheart. I'm not going to go into it more. You don't deserve it. Um, the man, there's a couple. I think the one that, um, that I do post a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Short answer. There we go. But very far away from me right now. So very upsetting. But I don't want to go into that right now. Mm. Okay. Has the idea of dating a slave ever crossed your mind? Yes, I date many that I consider my slaves. Um, let's see. Huh. Do I want to ask, answer a question on devotion or do I think we've done it? I think we might have done it, everybody. Let's, let's go to the bottom. 
Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Some new ones have come in. Thank you. All right. Hmm. Emma Louise Sophia. In a DS lifestyle, can you speak about how subs can be topping from the bottom and how you would deal with that? Ooh. <laughs> oh, all right. So when it comes to relationships and yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a big conversation, isn't it? This topping from the bottom thing and who's actually in control. It's a very, very big conversation, actually. But when it's very obvious that people are trying to manipulate um, how I'm going to feel and what I'm going to say and get them to do, when it's obvious to me, at least, how do I react? I'm very upset by it. <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. Usually I go through enough of a process of cutting out people who are kind of manipulative like that. But when it does happen or creep up on me, I am very, very angry and I dismiss them pretty quickly if I think it's too deep of a personality issue because it's just not going to work for me. Um, however, if it's just like a momentary like slip up like they're feeling really defensive and they just go into that space that, like they're trying to be like and it's just that one time uh, i might just say what was that <laughs> did you spot that don't do that again <laughs> and in some cases it doesn't happen again and that's like the best cases but if it ha happens repeatedly and they don't want to admit to it, understand it, and you can see that it's too much of a part of their personality and that's not the dynamic that you're looking for. It could be the dynamic you're looking for. You may be looking for, you know, a brat, which is fine, cool, up, up to you. <laughs> but um, for me, I have to dismiss them, otherwise it will drive me mad, drive me crazy. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that was a nice one. Okay. <laughs> Fadley, hi Fadley, how are you? I miss you. <sighs> do you forget what tasks you appointed to different slaves and get them mixed up? Or do you have their names saved? Was this a two part question? I can't read the rest of it. Do I have their names saved? Mm, sometimes I do mix it up, sometimes. Uh, I get people to screenshot me a list of their tasks. I, I get them to keep a list of the tasks that I've assigned to them. Um, and I do sometimes mess it up and I mess up what I've said to, to who. But everybody's aware of each other and so it's not such a big problem. I guess it would be a problem if people are not aware. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so yeah, I mean we're human. <laughs> and. Also, it really depends how you want to run things. There was probably a point in time where I kept more of a, like a, a running list of who people were and what I had done with them and what I want and, blah, 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 and all of these things, even what I wore. <laughs> but nowadays, I'm a little bit more free and easy. <laughs> and if I mess up, I mess up. And if I forget, that's fine. <laughs> so it really depends how controlled you want to be over the experience, I guess. And I don't know. It's kind of cute, you know, when I when I <laughs> when I forget that I gave somebody something and somebody something else, and I'm like, oh no, that wasn't you. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I didn't get a task. I could have had that task. It's quite cute to see them feel that. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I feel about that. Bye, Fadley. Hope you're well. Okay. All right. All right, all right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe do I? I think I might do one sub drop question, and then do we end on the sub drop? How? Okay. Why are all of these questions all over the place? Why don't they just put them in one spot? Hmm. Hmm. Everybody. Ooh, there's more coming in. Nope. Nope, not not about my DS lifestyle. Sorry. Okay, so we're just going to do, we're just going to do the sub drop one, and that is it for today. Thank you for all your questions. As always, you're very good at asking me some pretty good questions. Some of you have some pretty, 
shitty questions too, but you know, we're never going to see the light of day on those ones. How do you handle subdrop with your slave and what do you do to avoid it? Mm. I would like to say that there's an easy answer. <laughs> but there really isn't because everybody is so different and unless you're spending absolutely years with people like 20 years and you know them in and out and you've been honest with yourself and with them about who everybody is oh um it's really hard to know uh, how, how you're going to predict about how people are actually going to react however um i try to make sure people have as clear an idea as possible of what they're coming into uh, into a relationship with me and then I will also it's kind of like exposure no and it's not like exposure therapy right because it's like a lot of exposure so it's like increments I kind of let them into my life a little bit more and I'll check in kind of at the different milestones <laughs> or, or if I see a different level of horror on their face <laughs> then it's like are you sure that you want this <laughs> Are you sure that you want to be in this dynamic? So yeah, and then I might have a big debrief every now and then. This is my life, yeah? I'm not talking about in a scene or a session. It's, it's a bit different because a scene or a session is much more structured. Whereas in life, you just kind of have to do um, random check-ins every now and then to make sure people are doing okay. And then, but if you are doing like a heavy discipline session, I always make sure I do, um, I do softer touch after a heavy discipline session. You know, things like this, and always have chocolate ready. <laughs> it sounds so basic, but it really works. <laughs> um, yeah, can you avoid it? I mean, we're, we're, we can also talk about like top drop here, right? So it's like, how do I manage it for myself? How do I, it's about ha having it in my life in a nice, like, rolling kind of rhythm as opposed to too much of a peak. I don't. I, every now and then I like a little bit of like an adrenaline rush and I might do like a discipline session or I might get really pissed or whatever but in general for it to be sustainable I try to keep it at a, still an enjoyable level but in a way where I'm not totally like on the edge of my seat <laughs> or, or other no I like it when somebody else is on the edge of their seat but not my seat so so that's how I manage it for me and then how I manage it for them is that I check in a lot and I try to make sure that this is exactly what people want or at least something around how people want it. But I also try to remind people that they need to do their process for themselves. Like how I do a nice try to evening out thing, I need them to find their thing as well. And it's not so easy, you know? Relationships are not easy. DS relationships are not easy as are any, any of them. <laughs> None of them are easy. Um, but they can reveal things, they can bring such joy, they can bring such laughter, things that I like at least, and intensity and simplicity, and so human interaction is a beautiful place to play and to gain something beautiful from, or terrifying, or whatever it is that rocks your boat. <laughs> and I enjoy my place in the lifestyle, I thank you for your questions, and ask me more next month they're really good and they make me think also so thank you everybody for your time it's been 50 minutes of me talking about my ds lifestyle you're fabulous and i will see you next month thank you